I did not. That would be too simple. That was, again, the time when money became an issue. And I was like, I cannot afford to live in Denmark. I, I, I got bored because it was so easy. And I don't know. I didn't like that school at all. It was just like, I felt like I wasn't really getting too much out of it. I have a job, but why am I still bored? Why am I still feeling unfulfilled? I, I let myself uh, go into more elitist route, if you will, because I thought, like, oh, I have to be perfect. But then, in the end, I still thought, no, I can't do this. Hey, Sandra, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? It's been a long day, uh, but fun day. So much stuff happening every day. I've been doing a lot of these episodes, talking to people around the world. Yeah, That's it's pretty cool. It's so great to hear that someone is uh, actually busy during this time, not just staying home and watching Netflix and doing nothing. I don't think that's true. Whenever I'm pinging you, you like you you talking to China or you doing photo shoots like just before we came alive here, and you you have your side business uh, doing some sick designs and uh, staying negative in a positive way, mm-hmm. and so many things. So uh, I think you're just uh, mm. fooling me around. Oh, maybe that's it. So. Uh, I had a relatively happy childhood. I mean, I was born during the Soviet time, but obviously I don't remember much from it. Um, We lived in a very small town called Vero in the south of Estonia. And so we had this, um, um, like a hood, I guess you would say it, of like three houses together. And then my mom actually grew up in uh, in the same house, in the same apartment. And so all of our, like all of her friends, uh, kids ended up being my friends. And so it was like really cool community. We had like our own pack. But then when I was 10 years old, we, we moved away. We moved to a house and, and I remember being really upset about it because I was losing my my friends and so it was, we moved like four kilometers outside of the town and and then I had to whenever we would go to school my my parents had to drive us and then pick us up or we took the bus and so no more hood life and uh, but you were still in the same school uh yes I was uh, yeah I was in the same school but I never actually had that many friends from school. Uh, I just um, sort of kept to myself and was super nerdy. And I mean, by the time I reached like seventh, eighth, ninth grade, then we developed this. We had like this one group of um, <clears throat> nerds and then we hang out together. And uh, But just totally separate from from the rest of the classmates so what did the nerds do in estonia we would i remember this one time me and my friend we had a uh like a competition like who could finish reading the dialogues faster so i remember i stayed up all night and read it from cover to cover just so i could beat her that's what nerds did. Well, that's what we did. Yeah, but and then we also, yeah, we had this. Um, so our teachers would uh, count our grades, and then they would make this list, uh, like who has the highest uh, GPA, and then you know it was always like people from our small group of five or six or however many there was. Um, so we would always see like who has. 4.97 or 4.95 and then it was just something that we did kept count and i don't remember having that good grades in elementary school but 
when my sister, my middle sister went to school and she got started getting really good grades, I got very competitive and they, I wanted to be better. And, and then I started studying harder. Uh, and I sort of became obsessed with getting only straight A's and being overall perfect. So soon you were the best of the class. Uh, I was among top three to five, yes. We had this... Um, uh like we had this small group of uh girls who we we were the ones who would participate in uh you know like competitions and uh uh stuff and then and the teachers would have this um, list after every uh after every well semester period whatever where they would uh, count all the grades we had gotten during that uh, period and then count like the average and then make a list of all the students. And so basically the people in our small group were always among the first. I, I think it was like a few years back, I went to my parents' place in Vudu uh, and I have this box of old stuff. I keep some of the stuff that makes me nostalgic. And I have one of those lists over there. And it's just so funny uh, to look back at it and think, damn, we were such nerds. So you were good for, in math and probably also in the arts and crafts. Oh, in arts? I was shit in arts. Really? Yeah. I I was really good, yeah, in math, um, chemistry, uh, all the scientific uh, subjects I was really good at. I, I very much enjoy numbers. <laughs> and uh, But we had art class, and I remember I got a three in, 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 for one of the pieces that we had, had to make. And uh, you can imagine my disappointment, always striving to get A's, and then there's like, had to paint something or draw something and I would get a three well which is like a C right and I was very very upset about this uh, that was again at the time when people were not like why are we grading artistic subjects like th these are so totally subjective and you know who are you the teacher to um say that this piece that I made right now is crap. Like, how can you put a mark on this? So maybe you were rebelling. But... <laughs> no, no, no. I, I never, I, I never called anyone out for it. I just, I was just upset on the inside. Probably cried in my, uh, in my bed for getting a three in art. <laughs> totally messed up my GPA. I think you're quite visual nowadays, so something must have switched or something happened in between there if you or, or the teacher just didn't like your subjective uh, interpretation of the expressionism or whatever you were doing. <laughs> you know, something doesn't compute here. Um, I think uh, our art classes uh, were very much like I, w I also wanted to be perfect. So if we had to draw something, then I would, let's say, um, you have to draw a house. And I would find a picture of a house, and then I would try to draw that same house. So I didn't really allow myself to be uh, creative and think of a house myself, like, oh, maybe this one will have a purple rooftop, and maybe this one will have, uh, I don't know, yellow windows. I would be like, okay, this is the picture of the house, and now I'm drawing the same house as close to the real image as I possibly can. Uh, so I guess I was striving for, like, <laughs> photorealism or something. Uh, but then after, that was, like, way after I had already finished high school and everything. And, and I, 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 I had these um, entrance exams to art school uh, where we had to paint and draw. And I remember I got, um, out of 10 points, I got two points for my drawing. Wow. And then I got three points for my painting out of 10. Um, but you still got in. Uh, that was the first time. Yes, I got in, but I got in 
on like a paid uh, position. You know, I would have had to pay tuition. I I didn't uh, end up going to art school and after high school I got in, but I would have had to pay for it and and it was hard enough living away from home and being dependent on my dad's money and uh, you know it's always a stress to ask someone for money so I I could never have gone to him and say like oh uh, yeah dad so I went to a really good school graduated with honors and now I want to go and do art can you pay for it so uh, that sort of ended my dream of becoming uh, a designer at that time after high school and that was straight after high school yeah and then I and then I went to and then I was like okay I'm going to do science then or wherever I can get in for free and I had always been a nerd and everything I was really into medicine and uh, astronomy uh, as well and I thought okay well if I can't study art for free, uh, I will go and study something really expensive for free. Uh, and so I went to med school and I studied medicine for two and a half years. And um, I think it was my second year or something after that when I was like, oh my God, I can't take this anymore. Like I, can't, I, cannot, be, I cannot be a doctor and I'm going to do another tryout for the art school and then I went to the entrance exam and then I just like okay just forget everything like don't try to draw a perfect house what you see or yeah exactly don't try to draw everything exactly as it is but you know like just let go and just be creative just have fun with it and then I remember I got I got seven and an eight out of ten points uh, on the uh, drawing and painting uh, part of the entrance exam. Yeah, but then, then again, I, <laughs> and then again, I didn't go. Um, you didn't go. Then I, uh, then I didn't go either. Yeah. As a second time, you knocked on that the door the and then time. you went in. You basically got in. Would you say? Basically got nah. in. And then I didn't go. But you were still yeah. on a med school. Med school. Uh, then I was. I took a year off. In med school, I mean, I had this thought like, yeah, I can't do this anymore, right? But I wasn't going to, you know, withdraw my papers and just go. Um, I So I took this academic leave, you know, figured like, okay, I'm going to go and um, figure life out a little bit, live a little and, and then come back and see what I actually want to do. Uh, I remember telling my dad, though, that, yeah, I, I, being a doctor is what I want 100%. Like, I'm just going to just going to travel a little bit for a year and then just come back and then I will finish med school and I'm going to become a doctor and well that never happened <laughs> uh, but I, I ended up going uh, to Italy for a while did some traveling and then uh, at one point I got I got this thought that okay I've been sewing since I was a kid I really like design and I, I can't even remember why I didn't go to art school. I think, um, it, anyway, I ended up going uh, to a vocational school uh, halfway through my academic leave. And so I went and started uh, studying tailoring. And uh, that was the beginning of my designer career. And so I, I started tailoring and half a year later, it was time to, you know, choose if I was going to go back to med school or not. And uh, that was when I went to the dean's office and said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, unroll from medical school and I'm going to continue with my vocational education. You're going to do another type of stitches. Exactly. Another type of stitches. And... Um, that was that was it. That was me being done with uh, medicine. Like I still kept, uh, like I got a lot of contacts, and I was um, uh, very uh, into science. I just kept reading on my own, and uh, you know, trying to stimulate my mind in some other way. But I really enjoyed working with my hands, making clothes, and you know, doing the other kind of stitching. Uh, and, 
after that, I thought, okay, you know, um, I have to get a, like a university degree as well. And uh, so I started going, and then I went again to uh, entran- to do an entrance exam into art school. But then that time I, I did uh, an entrance exam to Estonian Academy of Arts. And then I also tried out for another design school in Denmark. And, um, and then I didn't get into the Estonian Academy of Arts. But I did get into the, uh, to do this uh, design school in Denmark. So you moved to Denmark next? I did not. <laughs> okay, that would be too I simple. <laughs> that would be too simple, exactly. So I actually, um, that was again the time when money became an issue. And I was like, I cannot afford to live in Denmark. Uh, so, and I didn't get into the Academy of Arts either. So, okay, what was there to do? I wanted to get a higher education, you know, like an actual bachelor's degree. Did you finish the tailoring? Yes. Okay. I guess it would be like an associate's degree or something. But you got some kind of a degree from there. You, you, you finished that one. So you're like a certified tailor in some sense. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Um, but I ended up going to the applied, you know, uh, the University of Applied Sciences. That's in Estonia. And uh, yes, that's in Estonia, and I and then I studied uh, resource management of uh, clothing and textiles. Uh, and halfway through that, I became so bored because. Let me guess, two and a half years. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give or take. No, I mean, I, I, I got bored because it was so easy. And I don't know. I didn't like that school at all. It was just like, I felt like I wasn't really getting too much out of it. So I, um, I mean, I did finish it. Like I graduated and everything, but I wanted to. So now you have two degrees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you count the vocational one. Then. And now I'm, I'm um, about to get my third one. No. Uh, do you still have your you don't have your sort of door open to the med school anymore you closed that door at the time you know i i think term. about it every yeah. every july every june july when there is you know <laughs> they're doing enrollments to university or something oh maybe i should go back you know maybe i'll try that again so some uh, stitches are still itching mm-hmm. they are yeah i really miss it like i miss you know being book smart i guess so that's the nerd again. Yeah, that's the nerd. Yeah. And now you're about to finalize your degree. Uh, yeah, so it was actually a funny story because I, when I was like two and a half years done into the Applied Sciences um, University, uh, I got a, an internship uh, at uh, Baltica. And, uh, can, you, can you explain to the audience what is Baltica? Oh, yeah. uh, so Baltica is, um, well, one of the biggest... Uh, fashion houses in the Baltics. And um, they, at that time, they had five, five uh, brands that they operated uh, all through the Baltics and across, um, across Europe, uh, well, some parts of Europe. And um, I was doing an internship, like a design internship. And then after that, I got a, I got a job offer to become a an assistant buyer for the menswear uh, brand Baltman. And uh, then after a while, there was some restructuring going on. And I went from being an assistant buyer to becoming an assistant uh, designer. And, uh, and then, yeah. And then I thought, okay, so this is my last year in the University of Applied Sciences. I have a job, but why am I still bored? Why am I still feeling unfulfilled? And and I I figured out that I am really, I really, really, really need to get this art degree that I've been yearning for since 2009. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to go to um, uh, try again into the to get into the Academy of Arts. And, and so I did, I was accepted 
And there was a, a period in my life where I was doing two universities and a full-time job, which was um, pretty pretty fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then uh, I graduated uh, the Applied Sciences um, University uh, and just continued with my job and the Academy of Arts and uh, studied fashion design there. And now I am about to graduate. <laughs> I've been in, in the academy for now five years. I took a gap year, uh, like where I did an internship in New York. But I guess what the moral of this story is that when somehow life will direct you to the thing that you're meant to be doing. I was always into sewing and and um, I was a creative type and I let myself be pulled into this like don't get me wrong I do love science and medical school and, but I, I let myself uh, go into more elitist route if you will because I thought like oh, I have to be perfect like I have to um, uh, like get my parents to be super proud of me, you know, because no one in my family has a higher education. And I was like, oh, I have to be like, I have to, I have to be making them so proud. And, but then in the end, I still thought, no, I can't do this. Like something pulled me into the arts, back into the arts and towards fashion. And, and uh, here I am. And actually quite a many times, because you were knocking on those doors, quite a many institutions and universities, and you were, sometimes you were accepted, other times you were not, but you were really like knocking and then, you know, going back mm-hmm. to, the, to the maths and the, the STEM. Yeah, persistence is key, I guess. And then yeah. you somehow found your, yourself in New York. I did. I found myself in New York. What is your favorite word? What is your least favorite word? Why? What turns you on creatively, spiritually or emotionally? Intelligence and TED Talks. (laughs) What turns you off? Neediness. What is your favorite curse word? Damn. What sound or noise do you love? Purring. What sound or noise do you hate? Snoring. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? First lady. What profession would you not like to do? A social media marketing manager. (laughs) If you could be a co-founder of any startup at any era, which one would you choose? Instagram. Any final words you want to say? I feel like I explored a lot of myself <laughs> during this um, this talk. So um, thank you for that. You really gave me something more to think about. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it very much. <laughs>